Tones for just shy of three years. I will celebrate my third anniversary in February. And I adore what I do. I absolutely love it. Um, before that, I had worked at Santa Rosa Baptist Association. I loved my job there. I loved working with the churches and the pastors and helping them out. Before that, I was a church and ministry assistant, and I enjoyed my job there. However, none compared to what I'm doing now. Working with families whose hearts want to help children in need. Working with them, walking alongside them, it is the best thing I could ever ask to do. Um, God has really blessed this ministry. When I first started at Florida Baptist, uh, not quite three years ago, we had 12 foster families. <laughs> and that represented about 30, 25 to 30 children we were able to impact. Now we have 27 homes, and while the need is still great, that's a huge job for us because that now represents about 50 to 60 children that we're able to impact. Florida Baptist. And, and it's totally God who's doing this, so please understand it. It's not anything that... Uh, I, our licensing specialist, or our director is doing it. It's, it's totally and completely God. Florida Baptist, we do have many ministries. We have the Brave, Mom, Brave Moms Ministry. Um, that's primarily down toward our home office in Lakeland. They minister to single moms. Some of those are teenage moms. Some of those are just young adults. Um, they have had, um, let's see, I pulled off some numbers. Right. Brave moms, they were able to help 41 uh, moms and their children in 2017. So I'm going to give you some of the statistics for all of the ministries, and then I'll talk a little more specifically about foster care, if that's okay. Um, in 2016, we were able to help through the various ministries. 171,273 children and adults. Um, that includes feeding 3 million in Florida and throughout our ministry partners and uh, Orphan's Heart throughout the world. Um, we had 950 foster, um, children in foster care. We had 195 in residential care, and then we had 95 in our emergency shelters. So total, that's about 1,240 children <coughs> last year that Florida Baptist impacted through these three ministries. Porchlight, I don't know if you've heard much about our Porchlight ministry. They are relatively new, but they um, reach out to those who have been involved in human trafficking, and they try to rescue them, and they put them in a safe place in an undisclosed location. Um, not even the employees of Florida Baptist know where exactly this home is, and it's for their protection, obviously. <coughs> Florida is one of the leading states for human trafficking. When I found this out, I was completely shocked. But um, even as close as Panama City is one of the leading places where they ship these young people out. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry, I did not write that number down for Fortnite, but it was um, over 100 young people who were rescued. Um, our Compassion Ministries. And Compassion Ministries is where um, Porch, uh, Orphan's Heart falls under. And then we also reach out, as we have donations given to us, we reach out to other ministries 
to partner alongside them to help them. I don't know if y'all have heard about our diaper drive. We just finished our diaper drive. Last week was Orphan Sunday. We were trying to raise over 600,000 diapers. And sometimes if we go, are able to go over our goal and we have extra diapers, some of the pre-pregnancy resources center, centers, the one in Milton and the one in Crestview, we were both able to give them diapers this year. And so those are our compassion ministries. We partner with other ministries um, to help go alongside and to help meet the needs. It, it's not a yours and mine kind of thing. We're all in this together. So that's how Florida Baptist approaches it. Um, so we were able to help 98,120 uh, or excuse me, 98,182 through Compassion Ministries Backpack Ministry. Um, what they do with the Backpack Ministry, children in the United States who go home and do not have food over the weekend, they pack a backpack for them, send them home with this backpack, and then the next week they get food at school, and then they give them the backpack again the next weekend so that they are not going hungry when they're not in school. So 98,000 children were reached with that ministry. Um, Orphan's Heart, I wish I, I didn't write it down, and I'm horrible at remembering the countries that Orphan Heart goes into. I know they have ministries in Guatemala and Honduras. There are several um, South American countries that they go to, but there are also others. Um, I think that they have a country or two in Africa that they go to. I say they, it's all of us, but I haven't, I haven't um, been able to go on a trip through Orphan's Heart, and so um, I'm not quite as familiar with that ministry. But I believe there's like 30 countries that Orphan's Heart goes in, they build community centers, and then they build little houses around the community center so that the people who come and live in this community have a constant support system. And they also hold church services in those community services as well as trying to provide services for the um, people to learn something, a trade or some way to try to help, um, help them find a way to make an income to make a living take As far as um, locally, our Florida Baptist Cantonment office, we serve the <coughs> County area, Escambia, Santa Rosa, Okaloosa, and Walton County. This year, we opened our first home in Walton County. I was very excited. We hadn't had any that far. Um, we don't have any right here in the Holt area. We have quite a few um, from Laurel Hill down to Shalimar. And we have several in Milton, Pace, uh, one in Navarre, and then in Pensacola. So our, our 27 homes are scattered pretty, pretty well. <coughs> Last month, we, since I have been here, we served 55 children in our 27 homes, and that was a record number. I was very excited when um, I pulled that report and saw that. This month it may even be a little higher. That includes foster homes, um, the children that are living permanently in those foster homes, and sometimes um, FFN is our, we're contracted through FFN, Families First Network, so if you know of a foster home, but they're not licensed through Florida Baptist, and how does that work? Well, they could be a Families First Network foster home, or they could be a United Methodist children's home. home. We all pull from the same kids. We all have the same, get the same phone calls for the same children. <coughs> and it's basically, uh, if there's a, a Sibling group, uh, three, four, five, even six children, we try to place siblings together as much as possible. Now, finding a place that can take six children is very difficult. 
So we try to place them by twos. If we can get two siblings together, that's ideal. <coughs> um, that's not always the case, though. Right now, we have a home in Niceville who has a, a baby. She'll turn She'll turn a year old in March. For two older siblings, we did not have a home for them in this area, so they're actually at our Tallahassee campus living in a group home. Now our group home, or our residential facility, they house eight children in cantonment. We're one of the smallest campuses, but we house eight children in our residential facility. We have house parents that live there 24-7. They get, uh, they work for 20 days, then they get a seven day break. And then they're back on 24-7 for another 20 days. Now that's ideal. Um, we have had some turnover lately. We've had some fall, um, house parents who have retired and finding house parents is not a very easy job because you're constantly with the children. You are the parents for eight children, nonstop, just like in your home, except you have eight children who have in some way, shape, or form been traumatized, and that trauma comes out in the way of behavior issues. So if you can imagine eight children in their various ways having some kind of behavior <coughs> issue to live with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, I don't know how they do it. I personally could not be a house parent. I know my limitations. I have three children, and I thought I was going to go bald with my three. <laughs> I love my children dearly, and I'm very thankful that they are grown. Having grandkids is great because when they get to the point where I need a break, I can send them home to mom and dad. But they don't have that option. They live with those children. They get a short seven-day break, and that's it. They do an amazing job, but it is a very exhausting job. So some of the needs that Florida Baptists have, if you know somebody who's great with parents, we need house parents. We're also building a beautiful family foster home. We're no longer building the residential facilities. They are too costly to maintain. So they've gone to this new model called a family foster home. Florida Baptist is supplying the house. <coughs> they will put all the furniture, all the necessities inside the house, and we are looking for foster parents to come and to live in this house. You will not be a paid employee, but you will not have rent either. So it's, it's kind of a switch off, and it's very different because our residential house parents, they are paid employees. However, um, you will be with your kids 24-7, 365 days, the person who chooses to live in this house. The utilities are minimal. Florida Baptist will cover part of the facility, um, part of the utilities, and will maintain the home. So you'll basically get to live in a home for free with minimal utilities, and you will get to take care of your children. It's a beautiful setup, and we are praying now. They have staked it out on our property, and we are praying now for God to show us who those house parents are. And if you would join us in praying that, um, that's one of the biggest needs that we have at the moment. The family foster home um, The other family foster homes that we have on other campuses have worked well. Um, some of them, they're hard to find because you don't get a break. You, you get to be a parent just like the rest of us for however long those kids are there. 
The purpose of the family foster home is to try to bring the larger family groups together and allow the siblings to be in one home with one set of parents. Um, it's hard, it's very, very hard to watch these children be stripped away, not only from their mom and dad, but from their siblings. Moms and dads make choices. As grown-ups, we all make choices. They have made bad choices, and they've gotten their children taken away from them. Those children did not do anything wrong. They still love their moms and dads. No matter what has gone on, they still love their moms and dads. And they are heartbroken whenever they can no longer be with their moms and dads. So having Christ-centered homes to put these children in is such a blessing because I go into the homes when the children are first placed and I see how sad they are and how they're kind of distancing themselves from the rest of the family. And then I go back in a few weeks or a few months, depending, I have to go in the home every three months, but if they get another replacement, then I might go back in a couple of weeks. Or if I need to drop something off, maybe they took a baby, um, I'm gonna take some diapers to the home, I get to see them a little more often. And it's so rewarding to walk back in that house whether it's a few weeks later or a few months later, and the child's hugging on the mom and dad and interacting with the children, and you can tell the switch has been made. They now know what a Christ-centered, loving home looks like. And for some of those kids, that's all they're ever going to have. Because if they go back to mom and dad, Sometimes mom and dad are able to get their stuff together and they're able to stay there long term until, you know, they become adults themselves. Sometimes they're back in care within a year and they have more trauma on them now. So now they're placed, sometimes we can get them into the same home that they were previously in where they kind of know the people, but more often than not, they go into a new home. So they go through the trauma of being placed in a home where they know nobody all over again. <coughs> so it, it's, it's hard. Foster care is not an easy job. But the rewards outweigh the hurt on our part. I hear so many people say, oh, I could never be a foster parent. I just couldn't go through that. I understand. But what if we're the only house these children ever see? And then they miss the opportunity. So we are praying for more people to open their homes to foster. We're praying for foster parents for the this family foster home. And please pray for our current foster family. Because um, I think of one young couple, they, they wanted to foster. They have no children of their own. Um, guessing they're probably in their early 20s. I would say they've probably been married three, maybe four years. And um, their pastor started fostering. And so they decided God was calling them to foster. When they got licensed, the day their license came through, we called them. We had three children, and their heart was for sibling groups. They wanted to try to keep siblings together. So we called them with three, these three kids. These three kids have been in foster care three times. And they took them. And these kids um, have been Think of, of that child that you know that is high energy all the time, every day, all day long, doesn't nap, doesn't like to sleep at night. Well, multiply that times three, and that's these three little ones. They, they went from no children to on go all the time. Um, they have had their hands full. <laughs> 
but they're doing amazing things in their children's lives. These, they are teaching them to calm themselves down. They're teaching them that it's okay to sleep all night. It's okay. Nobody's going to come in and wake you up or try to hurt you. You're safe. That's the part of my job, being able to place these children in homes where I know that they're safe, that helps me get through the days when I want to just sit down and cry. And believe me, I have many of those days as well. Not all foster homes are good foster homes, but we spring on homes, and you have to be um, a member of an evangelical church. You have to have a Christ-centered life. We ask you about your daily walk with Christ. We don't just ask you what church you attend, because many people attend church, but they have no relationship with Christ. So having a relationship with Christ is first and foremost. Um, what church do you attend? Are you actively involved in that church? We have to have a, a pastoral reference. If your pastor sends us a reference that says, yeah, they come occasionally, I know who they are, but you know, they come a little more often at Christmas and Easter, well, then we're going to be having a conversation with you. Well, I'm not a licensing specialist. Is. Um, because we want our children in churches. We want them to know Christ. That's the primary function of Florida Baptist Children's Homes. Each month, they print a report to see how many of the children in care have been exposed to the gospel. That's what our ministry is about. It's about helping children know Christ. So if we're putting them in Christ in our homes, then they're getting that. So you may know somebody. You, you're sitting here thinking, man, I know these people that love children. They would make excellent foster parents. Please tell them about us. We support our homes. We walk through the tough times with our homes. We don't just stick a kid in your home and say, okay, see you later. When the child leaves, let us know. Um, I'm in and out of our homes a lot, uh, dropping off diapers, taking um, other things that may be needed. We support our homes with um, <coughs> Christmas gifts, birthday gifts. We don't have to, but we try to do it as a ministry to take some of the burden off of the foster parents. Now, some foster parents say, oh, we're we're able to do that. It's not a big deal. But we understand that. But this is our way of supporting you in what you're doing. I personally am not able to foster. My husband and I don't see eye to eye on it. So I can't do it. But this is my way of following what God has laid on my heart. And my husband supports this. So... My question to you would be, how can you support fostering? Because everybody can do something. Sometimes I hear people say, well, the least I can do is pray. And that breaks my heart. Because it's not the least you can do. It's one of the most important things that we can do. If it weren't for the prayer support of our church partners, Florida Baptists would have closed their doors many, many years ago. We also appreciate our donors. Some um, donate hygiene items and food. We give those out to the foster families and we use them in our residential facilities. We do have a needs list. If your church would like to partner with us and you think, well, what do you need? We have a needs list. We can get that to you. But above all and most of all, please, please, please pray for Florida Baptist, for our foster homes, for our administrative team, um, Dr. Haig and the people that he has working with him in Lakeland are an awesome group of people. 
and their heart is to try to make Florida Baptist a better organization to reach more and more children for Christ and more and more moms and those who are in crisis. Um, Orphan's Heart is the same way. When they, when they build those communities, they want to bring those communities to Christ because the biggest way to impact a person's life is to lead them to Jesus. So thank you for your time, and I will be here after the service. If you have further questions or would like more information, I would be happy to share with you what I know. If I don't know the answer, I can go back tomorrow to find out, and if you leave me some contact information, I'll get the answers for you. Thank you.